morning. We welcome all parishioners to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish as your place of worship, of faith formation, and of outreach. This is a challenging time of change and transition for all of us in the Archdiocese of St. John's. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you will find a friendly welcome here. We all have different stories, talents, and gifts, and we hope to share these with each other. We welcome all of you with an open heart. We ask that all present to please respect the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers and maintaining a social distance of two meters. We encourage the wearing of masks. We depend upon your weekly offerings and donations to keep this parish operating, so there are collection boxes provided for you at the entrance and exits of the church, or you can donate online at the parish website, or return your envelopes to the parish office to obtain a tax receipt. Thank you for your continuing support. <coughs> our presider today is Father Cecil Critch. Our processional hymn is number 351 in the Kathy Book of Worship, on Jordan's bank. Please stand. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome. Our second Sunday of Advent, dear friends in Christ, on this second Sunday of Advent our attention is turned to the great figure of John the Baptist. John calls us out to the desert, proclaiming a time of repentance and renewal, for the day of the Lord is at hand as we light the two candles. <clears throat> On the Advent wreath, let us prepare ourselves through prayer and penance that us open a way for the Lord to come into our lives. Yeah. 
God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the branch of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursling child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand in the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, <clears throat> for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the seas are covered by water. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a sign to the people. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responses can be found in the booklet in your pews. The response refrain, in his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. Give the King your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a King's Son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. In his days may righteousness flourish 
and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. For he delivers the needy one who calls, the poor and the one who has no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. May his name endure forever. His fame continue as long as the sun. May all nations be blessed in him. May they pronounce him happy. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together we may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah wrote when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region around the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, John said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? bear fruit worthy of repentance, do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, for I tell you God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing hook fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. The Advent season introduces us to the themes of anticipation, waiting, and vigilance as we prepare our hearts for the coming of Jesus, the celebration of the coming of Jesus at Christmas. We recall the first coming of Jesus in history, which is the great sign of God's love for humanity. The liturgy also beckons us to be vigilant and ready for the second coming of Jesus. Isaiah says that though the family tree of David had been reduced to a mere stump, Nevertheless, from that stump, a new shoot, a new king will spring, possessing all the gifts of the spirit, the wisdom and understanding of Solomon, the prudence and might of David, the knowledge and fear of the Lord, of the prophets and the patriarchs. He will be a fair judge and will be champion of the poor. Isaiah's message is God's dream of lasting peace for the world, for creation. Isaiah wants us to prepare the way of the Lord and invites us to be attentive to the simple ways God touches our lives every day. I love that image of the stump of Jesse. We can all picture the image of a tree stump dry and dead and gray and lifeless. It seems impossible that life would ever come from there. How could anything sprout from something so barren? But this kind of image lies at the heart of many biblical events. In a creation story, out of the formless, shapeless void sprang an entire universe. Though they were elderly, Abraham and Sarah produced a bud that would eventually bloom into the whole nation of Israel. Elizabeth was barren and gave birth to John the Baptist, and new life came from Mary in a very unexpected way. And then there's Jesus. Think of how his life and ministry were cut down from the cross only to shoot up to spring forth from the grave three days later. We all have experiences of dead stumps in our lives, I believe. Maybe it's a wounded relationship with a family member or friend or lingering guilt over past sins, or it could be anxiety over illness or a job or over the future. Whatever it is, know that God can bring new life out of death and new life out of dark situations. God can help us become more loving, you know, more patient and more compassionate because love really can cause new shoots to grow. We pray that we can welcome the experience of God's healing touch then into the dead stumps of our lives this Advent season because Emmanuel is God with us. And God has planted a forest full of seeds in each of us in baptism. In the gospel, we encounter John the Baptist, the teacher, the preacher, the prophet, courageously and boldly announcing that people should prepare for the coming of the Lord, coming for the kingdom of the Lord by repenting and changing their lives so that Jesus would find a welcome into their hearts. And we are called in Advent to do the same. As we prepare for Christmas, we are called to renew our lives 
acknowledging our need for Christ and remove all the obstacles in our lives that prevent Jesus from entering into our hearts and souls. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, calls us to be welcoming, to be a church that welcomes all people, to be a church of hope that we might glorify God together in unity and peace. That's what our community is about. So as baptized Christians, we are sent out then from community as missionary disciples to be like John the Baptist, a voice crying in the wilderness. By the way, that's the motto of our archdiocese, a voice crying in the wilderness, John the Baptist. We are sent out to be a prophet preparing the way for Jesus Christ to enter into all human hearts. The good news is that each of us has been chosen by God at baptism to be that light in the darkness, to be his prophets, his instruments of his grace, channels to which others may experience the love of God. If Jesus is to have an effect on the world today, it is through us, his followers, living in such a way that people will see the hand of God at work in us in the most ordinary situations in their lives. Christ is depending on us being his hands, his voice in the world, carrying that light of redemption to other people, bearing witness to him, going out and preaching by our words, but especially by our loving deeds for others. As with John the Baptist proclaiming the gospel of mercy, reconciliation, justice, love, and peace, today requires courage because it is never easy to do what is right. It means having often to go against popular cultural views. Just knowing, too, that the Jesus is at work in our lives when we make peace with family members with whom we have quarreled, the relatives we don't speak to anymore, the neighbors we have had a fallen out with, the poor we have no time for, and whose suffering we don't want to know about. These are all the ways that we meet Jesus every day. And breaking down any barriers will open the way for Christ to come to us and be born in our hearts this Christmas. If we do this and live in Christ and he lives in us, the new shoot, the new fruit will bear its fruit beyond imagining. For without Christ there can be no lasting growth. Please stand as we profess our faith and we, pro we proclaim the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn now with great trust in our Heavenly Father to hear and answer all our prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Peter, our Archbishop, that during the season of Advent, they may continue to guide the Church, the people of God, in the ways of unity and peace. We pray to the Lord. For our Archdiocese, in this time of restructuring and renewal, that the season of Advent and the beginning of this new Church year Give us new hope during these difficult times of challenge and change. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during the season of Advent, we may prepare our hearts for the celebration of the coming of Jesus at Christmas. That we may be steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and untiring in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and we pray for our seminarian, Chris Quigley. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all of the sick in body, mind, and spirit, especially Peggy Reed and Lydia Alexander, 
that they may be shown a spirit of care and kindness by those who minister to their needs. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all of our faithful departed and for our recently deceased Tom Kennedy and James Walsh. And we pray for those who mourn the death of loved ones, that they may be consoled by the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the prayers in the quiet of your hearts today. God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts. We make them in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. my sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father let us pray 
Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all that's at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise for, in which now we dare to hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory. We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, St. John Bosco, St. Patrick, and St. Pius Tantum, with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance to peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth 
with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share that peace of Christ now with one another. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter my life, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you. Spiritual communion for those viewing online and for those who cannot receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that you please begin from the side sections, maintain a two-meter distance in the communion line, and sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. There will be two communion ministers, one at the front and one at the middle. and celebrate in song, Take and Eat.
A uh, few announcements from the highlights of the bulletin this weekend. Uh, next week is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, December the 8th. Uh, from 12 to 1 will be a special Reflection Hour of Grace here at the Cathedral. So, um, Reflection on Psalm 51 particularly, so you're invited to be part of that. It's a special day. 
to thank the, uh, all those who helped with the Emmaus Food Bank uh, annual Christmas hamper project we're working on here at the Basilica. Thank you for your continuing support of that project. I'd like to thank the Knights of Columbus for the beautiful project with the gathering place, collecting uh, winter clothing as well as uh, toiletry items for the gathering place. Appreciated the wonderful work there. The Basilica Community Builders for the fantastic bake sale, the success they had in the bazaar last week. Thank you for that as well. I attend the attention all children there at the back, you'll, on the side here you'll find uh, coloring sheets from the Knights of Columbus, the annual Christmas coloring contents of the Nativity. So uh, get a copy of that and uh, enter that contest to be very wonderful, be a part of that whole uh, area. Because of the Immaculate Conception next week, uh, we have uh, people at the end doors. If you haven't got any, uh, if you need any miraculous medals, they're free for you to take today. Uh, the Miraculous Medal, of course, uh, the vision of St. Catherine Labore, and uh, it's a beautiful, it was called the Medal of the Immaculate Conception, and miraculous because of the miracles uh, from the medal. Uh, if you look at the front of the medal, it has a picture of Our Lady, and uh, with her arms open, and uh, in the back it has a, the letter M, and the cross, which is the sign of how Mary was close to Jesus and his suffering and death on the cross. So, if you'd like to have uh, a, a medal or some to take home with you to uh, check with uh, the people at the International. Thank the Martin family for uh, certainly uh, organizing that project in this area. So you're welcome to uh, take some of those home. Also, uh, at the back of the church, again, the Basilica Heritage Foundation got uh, John is there uh, for beautiful uh, uh, ornaments and gifts for Christmas as well. There's a book, beautiful book, uh, Catholic Prayers for All Occasions, and it's written by Father John Hillier, who was a uh, member of this diocese. He was also uh, grew up here in the Basilica and uh, was a, an altar service here. Now he's a priest in the Diocese of Matuchin in New Jersey, and he's works with the bishop there. He's on a beautiful book called Catholic Prayers for All Occasions, a great gift for Christmas. Check with John at the back of the church for copies of that book. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, we may, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Um, before we uh, sing our last hymn, there is a green Jeep uh, with license plate JG3212 or 217 and a red RAV4 JLT710. You're blocking the um, handicap ramp. If you could move your car, please. Our mission in him is 6.14 in the celebrate and song, Return Redeemer God. <laughs>
Thank you.